so in power bi the main uh, or the important step is the first one is we are importing the data okay so you, you can import the data from different i mean variable sources uh, from mm. excel from primavera like this many mm. uh, ms access and sql server uh, like this you know uh, the different uh, data platforms you can use for that so once the once you got the data we have here the power query option to um, you know uh, for example you are importing the data from primavera so maybe so many informations are there some informations we don't want or so many uh, details will be there and some we don't want for our current uh, analysis so th okay. these all the things we segregated uh, by using the power query options we will discuss about that okay, okay. so then okay. <clears throat> and you can see here so many chart options same like excel we see so many chart options you have here and you can uh, import the custom visuals also uh, that means like in uh, you know so many the, the custom visuals normally provided by the microsoft i mean uh, the um, parent company is providing some visuals that always you can download and you can use it and some other companies also i mean the people or the companies are providing that but you know, here this microsoft itself is saying that uh, some um, custom visuals when, when you take that will be potentially harmful so that that means normally we use the one which is from the trusted site like microsoft okay 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 <clears throat> and the the most important and the challenging part of this power bi is the dax formulas dax dax formulas dax formulas normally you know like whatever we do in excel everything you can do over here but it is not like excel you don't you cannot apply the formula directly over here so the dax formulas mm -hmm. are basically a programming code so to create the uh, very beautiful um, presentations you know uh, the understanding of dax formulas are very important and the mm. other thing we customize our um, report how you want mm. to see your report the way we need to customize it so these all are the important things of the primavera mm. uh, sorry mm. Mm -hmm, power bi mm. uh, dashboard okay. okay and later on you can save it as pdf file you can uh, you know publish and mm. you can just uh, send to your other colleagues and all, all these mm. things you mm. can share your data with that but mm. for that you should have the organizational email i mean organizational license okay it has okay. two type of license the individual license also there organizational mm. license is there in individual mm. license you can do everything but you cannot share with the multiple people mm. and some mm. restrictions also there but if it is an organizational license you you can send okay. to many people whoever is uh, you know okay. coming out there so today we will just see that one simple dashboard you can see over here yeah so basically i import I, i'll explain that how we done no it okay. Okay. okay so you can see over here and um, this is the picture i placed this text we written and here you can see th there is a few things like when i select here the complete are you able to see that properly yeah when i click on this complete see here my all the data is changed according yeah. to this one and yeah. if i give in progress all the data mm. is changed accordingly if i select all again everything will be coming back same mm -hmm. way this is by the team leaders when i click over here so this is mm. the this is one thing we have done and the other thing you can see here we have the page navigator that means suppose you same like excel we create many sheets right here also you can create it many sheet that means the main dashboard you can create it then you can create many other things over here and you can navigate like for example if i click mm. on this it will take mm. me to the other file like this uh, not other file actually the yeah. other view See, yeah okay, uh, okay i didn't do anything over there i just mm. showed you this one that's it okay so okay. this is the way uh, mm. like and buttons also we can place it and uh, you can create uh, some beaut um, beautiful things i mean the sceneries and backgrounds mm. everything from the powerpoints and later you can take it over here so these all the things we will see 
how we okay. can do it. Okay. Okay. So for this, so first when we open, we can see over here the blank report. So click on the blank report. Okay, so this is, uh, once we open that, the, uh, the blank report will be coming over here. And here you can see the visuals. You can see over here table, relationship, and max. But yeah. before that, we need to take our data. Okay, you can take the data mm. from your Excel, from SQL mm. server, and uh, paste data into blank table. I mean, uh, directly, even directly you can type the data here. Mm -hmm. or you can just go to the get data options you have so many options over there to take the data mm -hmm. but when you take the data from the sql server um actually let's say directly you want to in primavera both the way you can use it one is mm -hmm. the da primavera data you export as an excel file then you mm -hmm. can use it the mm -hmm. other one directly you can connect your uh, Power BI SQL yeah, server, uh, SQL yeah. Server. Mm. Uh, so that is the Primavera one, uh, SQL light. Normally we call that uh, this one is SQL light. For mm. that, uh, norm, especially in organization organizations, we have mm. the Primavera database, the username, the password. Uh, all mm. these things will be there, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. That main. For example, in, uh, in one organization, maybe you know many people are using the primavera okay so, so maybe the same password or the different pass username and password they are using but there will be a core uh, the administration password and the user mm. username mm. administration is the username and the password will be there so Correct. these all the things we should know mm. that, uh, to connect with the primavera so anyway we will see that how that process will be mm. doing mm. so currently mm. i'm taking the data from the excel so mm import data in data from excel mm -hmm. so let me just select this i take this data then click mm -hmm. open so once i take from here from that particular file what i selected you can see there are two tables one is data the other one is teams so okay. if i select the data you can see the uh, data which is inside mm -hmm. you will be able to see over here mm -hmm. and uh, later you can use the transform data power query that is called the power query then later mm -hmm. you can you know uh, remove certain things and you can add some something over there so we'll mm -hmm see that into the next level now currently okay. i'm going to import it and the okay. team also i select then we mm. click here load mm. So, once we loaded over here, you can, mm. where you can see your data, here you can see the visualizations and you, your data you can see, and data mm. and teams, both the table what I have imported mm. from there. Mm. Then here you can see the table, when you go to the table, there you can see your table clearly, let's say, this is the first one is the data table i have the task mm. uh, id i have mm. the parent id the project number assigned mm. to is the uh, for example this is assigned to the particular team members okay mm. and mm. the start date end date and the current date then mm. the progress uh, and you can see the status also mm. uh, this is the progress progress basically in percentage 
So if mm. I wanted to change this one in percentage, what to do? Currently, it is coming in decimal values, right? Zero point zero one. So you have to click on this, and you can see here the format, the column tools, the format, and from here you can just click on the percentage. Mm. So once you click that into the percentage, you can see that it's changed into the percentage now, and mm. the status is also there. So anyway, this is assigned. to the team members but who's mm -hmm. where is this team members that means you need to go to the other chart table mm -hmm. and you can see over here these all are our team leaders or yeah okay we can say team leaders and the group mm -hmm. head also given over here mm -hmm. so how these two table is connected here we are mm -hmm. saying that that means here you can see this task is assigned to this particular or this project is assigned to this particular team member or mm. team leader 3 so you check mm. in the teams there you can see 3 is this jennifer johnson something like this the mm. name mm. is given mm. over there but how this is this is understood like this 3 it has to be taken from the teams and 3 mm. so for mm. that you just go to this model view mm. uh which is your hierarchy when you click over here both of your table you can see it and you just drag here see here now it is not automatically connected some cases mm. it will be automatically connected for example you give here also you have the project id and here also you have project id automatically that will be connected project id to project id mm. okay mm. but this case it is not connected because we don't have any mm. um uh what we say that the common name over here mm. correct but correct. actually what i want this assigned to i need to connect to this number okay. mm -hmm. so i click on this assign to then i have to connect to the number click mm -hmm. and drag here then you click save so you can see one relationship is created so the relationship mm -hmm. is very important in database mm -hmm. so not only this database let, let's say suppose we learn this um, ms uh, access that is one database mm -hmm. sql mm. server sql that is another database so mm. all these things the relational data in this relational formulas mm. or the mm. relationship we will be setting mm. Mm. that is the way the system will understand what is the i mean how these both the table is connected understood otherwise it will okay. be just consider as a two separate tables now Correct. it will be not same table definitely but it's it's a um this table is having the connection now when mm. you see that three they already i mean automatically go to the teams table and check what is the three over there correct mm. this is called mm. the relationship mm. so some cases it depends on your data automatically it will be coming it detect mm. automatically but to detect mm. automatically you have to go to the file there you have an options you can see over here options and mm. settings mm. when you click on options and settings you can just go to the options in this option you can see the current file data mm. load when you click on mm. this data load uh, there you can see um hello data preview to download you can see yeah this one import relationship from data sources on first load see this is turned mm. on so when it is turned on if there are same name in both the table automatically i mean same column name i'm talking about mm -hmm. it will be automatically connected um if if this is turned on okay if not it will be coming like this only but here mm -hmm. it was not connected because it is not the we don't have the same for example the same number you have here then automatically oh. it will be connected mm -hmm. but here we have given another name assigned to correct mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that we only knows what should connect with what so we connected mm -hmm. over here understood mm -hmm. now and when mm -hmm. you receive one file you just wanted to know that which is connected with what uh, the relationship mm -hmm. you can see something like this and to identify mm -hmm. that you just keep your mouse pointer on the middle mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. so it will be showing what connected with what mm -hmm. the assigned to is connected with the number okay mm -hmm. now we will go back to our visuals so here 
the first thing I, I'm just selecting one chart uh, one visuals from here yeah so let's say we will be selecting this column chart I select this column chart so the column chart is created if you don't select anything here and you select some data by default the column chart will be coming column chart is the default mm. chart but you can later change mm. into mm. anything anyway currently I click on this column chart then I have to go mm. here and I can see there is all the information I mean all informations you can see over here the current mm. date end date whatever we have given so I just select mm. this and you can see the axis so this is the x-axis and y-axis of your column chart mm. so you select mm. this current uh, project I select the project and I place on the x-axis mm. then I select from here um, the progress I select the progress and I place on the y-axis so once I create this one see here Mm. this is the project wise your uh, I mean the chart okay but I need mm. to change this one I don't want the project instead of that I need to take the team leader from here you just go here and you can see the group head the team leader I'll just I'll remove this one and I add the team leader over here so team leader wise progress you can see now. Mm. Mm. correct right so yeah. you can take it by your task or you can take it by your project you can take it by your team leader in anything what you wanted to present mm -hmm. or analyze over here and once you created this one you can see here and let's say I need to change into the stacked bar chart I click on the stacked bar chart see it will be coming mm -hmm. like this and uh, like this anything like you can select it so anyway i'm keeping over here now in the column chart only so let's say okay. we click on the column chart but i need to change few things over here so how can we format mm. this column chart not only the column chart any chart how can we format mm. it for this and one more thing now you see here when you keep the mouse pointer here you can see that team leader name and the sum of mm. progress you can see actually i wanted to find here the average so i need to change from sum to average okay mm. so in x-axis you can see the sum of progress you just right click here and you can change from here average minimum maximum count standard deviation variance medium all these informations mm. you'll be getting it normally you can call mm. it as a function basic functions mm. so mm. from here i'll choose this average <coughs> so you can see that it has changed according to the average mm. right average progress of this particular um, team leader you can see 22.73 something is it is coming now here we can see average of progress by team leader this is taken because the name is here average of progress correct mm. so I'll mm. just go to the I can just right click here uh, and I can select it from rename for this visual you can just click and mm -hmm. rename for the visuals and I give here average of progress I just remove that one then I press enter so you can see that it has changed into progress by team mm -hmm. leader because we have mm -hmm. take, taken the team leader over here mm -hmm. now when you mm -hmm. select this format your visuals when you go to this format your visuals you can see here you can format everything like x-axis y-axis grid lines and the zoom mm. slider columns data labels like this you can see it so the first thing mm. I'll select mm. the x-axis from this x-axis currently the values are on if you turned off this values see mm. the x-axis values removed from here and you turned on the value it is coming yeah. and you can format it you can select the font color font style font size and the font mm. color also from here same mm. right then mm. uh, you can okay this is what we do from the x-axis values then you can see here the title so title text is auto text auto text in sense when you drag and drop the team leader over there automatically it was created average progress by the team leader correct then later mm -hmm. on I removed the uh, this one over there the, mm, the main mm. title and the same way the team leader here you can see the x-axis title the team leader mm. 
so this by auto auto means by default it is picked from the data uh, but in case you wanted to change it you could have type it over here so i'll just type here So here when I type the uh, what I type over there, that will be coming over here. Then the style, show mm. titles only. Then again, you can change the colors in case you want. Uh, let's say if I select the colors. See, this post, this this is very important mm. for uh, to customize your uh, report. Normally, mm. how people are making very beautiful report, they all are using the same power bi tools but you know the color mm. combination what they use mm. the background what they have selecting uh, this is very important so anyway mm. we select this thing then you can see here uh, uh, next i'll go to the y-axis and in y-axis also here it shows now the um, uh, minimum maximum values automatically it picks from the data in case you want to change you can change it here also you can turn on and off your mm. uh, um, i mean the values the y-axis values and uh, same thing we have to do it over there anyway when we do the we, when we customize our report we will look more into that now i'm just explaining those things here. okay okay then here you can see the title you can on and you can off the title see this is progress this one so this mm. I don't want here, so I'll just turn it off. And mm. you can just select um, here the grid lines. Grid lines, basically you have the horizontal, you see that one horizontal grid lines are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can turn off the grid lines or you can just change the color of the grid lines. See? Mm. Mm. And the transparency, uh, zero, trans zero percent, hundred percent transparent in the sense you don't see that one. Then, transparency mm -hmm. you can adjust it from here and the dotted lines or dashed lines or the solid line uh, what mm -hmm. currently see here this is the solid line so anyway i don't want that i'll just remove that horizontal that means we are yeah. just cleaning our chart that's it okay okay, okay. then again the zoom slider i'll tell you later when we create mm -hmm. the gantt chart and all we'll use this mm -hmm. zoom slider options that is mm -hmm. uh, like you know you have so many data uh, and uh, in your mm. grand chart but we have very limited space over here to place all these things right so then you can mm. just drag from one side to another side same like in excel mm. and all you see that mm. and mm. even prime mm. over and you can see the things for that purpose we will be using the zoom, zoom slider here okay. it is not relevant so that we will look into later then okay. here you can see the data labels you can turn on and off the data label see here mm. i turned mm. on the data label here so I'm just mm. going to turn off this one. So I'll just mm. go to the uh, y-axis values. Yes, I turned off the y-axis values because I got all, I, I have placed already the values here mm. that mm. we have placed from our data labels. Now, when you click on, um, okay, so these all the things are coming in visuals. And when you mm. click on general, you can just see over here the properties. That means when you create the, uh, with, um, the report you just wanted to properly place and align uh, so y you can give the different for example you have two charts or three charts sometimes we have many charts so mm. properly we need to allocate the space for that so you can just give over here what is the height for example I give here 400 see here your mm. chart height is 400 now and the width you can just give um, maybe 800 I given the width See here accordingly it is created mm -hmm. so this is the way we can do it and uh, exactly we can position it where we need that also you can change the values vertically and horizontally so horizontally mm -hmm. nine you can see and vertically it is zero because vertically it is coming the same i mean the starting mm -hmm. positions mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, padding you can give over here what is mean by the padding padding let's say if i give here five see from the top it's take five down let's say mm. 50 mm -hmm. understood right so that yeah, is yeah. called the padding so that is also uh, mm. accordingly we can set it so currently let it be the same thing and um, we have to make sure um, 
the advanced option responsive that I always make it on that means whenever you uh, the last time you said that when i click yeah. on that it was working accordingly so mm -hmm. uh, for that we need to make it responsive mm -hmm. then again the title you see and you can see here this uh, progress by team leader mm -hmm. and if you want to type something else you can type it over here and you can mm -hmm. select the heading one or heading two i mean different headings we can select it and the font color size all these things we will be able to select it from here mm. okay so this is the way we have created our first chart then yeah. i select this and um, i just drag and place it over here then next i need to create another chart but before mm. that i have to use here see here i'm just going to create this one in uh, um, i mean the same way how we got it here mm -hmm. so here you can see let me just make sure this is more into the um, what we say the portrait format right mm -hmm. so how can we change that for this you click outside okay mm -hmm. click outside of the chart and you go here format your report page so click mm -hmm. over here and you can see the page information the page name you can give let's say i'm giving over here the dashboard mm -hmm. dashboard then go to the canvas setting in this canvas setting um uh, top vertical that is fine i'll select here canvas background mm -hmm. Uh, where we have to type this okay canvas setting the type um, you can see here like 16 into 9 percentage 4 into 9 letter mm -hmm. type when I click over here it is coming something like a letter type mm -hmm. I mean in word excel when you use you have the letter format over there right? mm -hmm. so the same size will be taken but if I don't want to take this size I need to change this one so I'll click on this custom once mm -hmm. I select the custom here I can give what is the height and the width required. So I'll give mm. the height of 1200 mm. pixels and I give here the width of 1000. Mm. So once I do that, you can see my uh, page is set accordingly. Mm. So then that means first we need to decide how your report has to be looks like. Then accordingly you set it. So you will be getting, you can add more data over here now, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say we just go to this and uh, now I just need to add over here my uh, heading. For that, you can use the text box options from here. So select the text box options and I, select, I just type here project. Uh, okay then once you select this you can see here the font style you can select it mm -hmm. let's say ideal black i select the bold you can give it and the font size you can give from here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me just take 40. yeah i select this one mm -hmm. then make it center then you can See, when you click on this, it comes up to here. So you click mm -hmm. here and uh, try to make it smaller. Mm, ideal 40 values, okay. And I'll be selecting from here okay so after this I select this mm -hmm. and here you can see again the properties mm -hmm. and you can just click on the properties so you can see here the height and mm -hmm. the width the text box 
so i'm just going to change no no you can just click here and drag but sometimes it won't properly fix on that so it's mm. better you go here the properties and you can see the height and you can see the width the mm. width anyways we have given um uh, what was the width of our table thousand right so thousand, i can yeah. just give that thousand over here and the height i'm just going to give now 100 or something so see here now it mm. becomes smaller and uh, here let, currently i give thousand but later we will see how can we change okay i just give here thousand the value must be less than or equal to uh, okay because both the side we have the padding so we give here 900 so you can see that it is placed here mm. Yeah. then after this you can just go to the effect and you can see the background color in case you want you can add the background color over here mm. and uh, um, and later on the transparency you can adjust it from here mm. okay so um, currently i'll keep it white because later i'll apply one background color so accordingly we will choose the color so currently it's better initial stage everything you keep it as a white color Mm. then okay then the visual border that means you need a border around this one turned off the visual border and uh, same like this visual border color also you can do it so this is the way we can just and go to the title uh, currently there is no title we own and you can see the title text you can type it over here and uh, that means title text here also you can type it and the text color you can choose from here so all these options you can but from here for the title text but currently i need to give the color for this one so that from where we will do here itself you can see this font color options here and you can mm -hmm. select the color from here now so currently i'll be selecting this color okay so we have done that next we have we are going to create another chart so for mm. this, I'll be selecting this pie chart. So once you select the pie chart, okay, this is my pie chart. Then again, I'll go to the format and I can, I mean, click on the chart. For first, we need to add the data to the chart. Mm. So this is the chart then we are selecting over here uh, what is the data required that is the same data we are going to use it so you can see here this is also the progress by report i have create i mean the project we have created so the same thing i'm going to do here you have to select the project here and the values we have to select here progress so you can see that chart is created over here then once you've done this you just go to this format values and uh, general click on properties and i'll change the height into maybe 400 or 500 let's say then i need to select here the width uh, which is 400 or 500 we select okay. so once you create that you will be able to see a chart here now i place this chart here and this i'm taking see here now when i'm clicking yeah. on this one you can see that changes is coming over here right so how yeah. can i go back i have to double click over here because currently mm. I did not place any other buttons or icons over there. Mm -hmm. Directly when I click on this, see, this also will be changed accordingly. So now to go back, you have to click on that same thing inside, not this chart. So mm. where you have selected, basically when you click on that, you are filtering that chart option. So just mm -hmm. double click on that chart. So everything mm. will be coming back. Okay. So this is the way you can do it. <laughs> okay, then anyways, I'll take this bit down. And later we will arrange it properly but uh, okay. and when you take this chart 
again you mm. have to go to the um, options over here <coughs> and you can see some of progress I need to change that um, right click I do here average and we have to go to the format visuals and you can see general click on properties the size is already I have given the padding that's okay then I'll click on this title um, you can see this is the title here so instead of that I remove this one average of progress I change that into progress or, or else you can directly right click and give rename for this visuals so okay. I change this one so you can see that it is changed into progress by project or you can type anything from here okay see. so like this the colors everything we have to choose it from here then uh, what else I need yeah so I just want to change let's say we'll go to this visual and you can see the legend you can turn on and off the legend this is the mm -hmm. pro this is mm -hmm. my project id or task id whatever like in this case it is a project id okay mm -hmm. so i just mm -hmm. wanted to keep that one click over here it is currently in the center right so i click here left center so we can see here bottom left center left i choose here center left so the other side and the left mm -hmm. side it will be coming then again you go down um, general and you can just check from here padding title okay turned off the title this one detail labels you see here mm -hmm. now you mm -hmm. can see the detail labels over there let me just make it correct right the detail labels yeah. is coming i just turned off the detail labels from there so only these things you will be seeing and when you point the mouse you will be seeing these things okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. click over here the detail labels i turned off or you can click or you can turn i mean you can turn on also mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. here. so this is the way i i have just formatted uh, so understood right everything yeah, yeah. we have we need to format it from here see this car and uh, one more thing um, you go here and you can select visual and general uh, this is the general options I'll just go to the title effect you can again you can give the background here mm -hmm. background color in case you want you can do it uh, currently I don't want the visual border I'm just going to create a border I turn the border on so you will be seeing a border around it mm. so to identify your chart separately you could have used that one so mm. let's see then again the legend the slices when you click on the slices we have so many because each one represent the each project which is currently available so you want mm. to change the color for this one you can change it from here mm -hmm. okay. and we have the more color options and you can choose the colors also from here so anyway mm -hmm. okay. and you can uh, you wanted to select because normally when we select the colors from here um, that actually the colors are very very uh, for example we say that amber color orange color or red color most mostly all our colors will i mean our eyes will be detecting all the colors like red only right mm -hmm. but actually it is not in red is also having so many variations so each color is having uh, you mm -hmm. know um, different color variations so how yeah. they have select that exact color you can check the google the color code then you can just mm. type that same color code over there the exact color the computer will pick because in computer always the color not only like power bi in system in computer yeah this yeah. is saved as this way so that particular mm. color so the same color you need to select somewhere else okay mm -hmm. you manually pick from here you don't get the same color this is what i mean mm. to say mm -hmm. so normally Correct. the same patterns or something you wanted to maintain you have to use always this hex code just uh, copy that code somewhere then paste it automatically it will be picking that colors okay, okay. <clears throat> so that's it 
now i need to create um, okay so that is what we done the details you want you have to apply over there again mm -hmm. so this is the way you can create many chart depends on your data you select the chart and you have to place it so next mm -hmm. we have to see here you can see there is an options uh, called filter options this one slicer the filter mm -hmm. so when you select uh, yeah see here currently what is happening because my project uh, um, project by um, by the code this all are the project code how it has changed actually i don't want to change that one i'll just click outside this is i need accordingly then i click over here then i have to choose here slicer options when i select the slicer then i need to select this for example i select from here in this status i select the status i click and drag here so you can see here now how it is coming again you just click over here and i select this general and you go to the properties and the slicer height you can select let's say i give uh, width is okay we will change that later if we want uh, i'll give here um, 250 something like this so you can see that how it is coming okay so this is the slicer so once i select the slicer for example i just wanted to see only the completed project so i just click on this you can see the changes on your all is changed into the 100 percentage right mm -hmm. so i turned off this and i click on in progress i'll be seeing this but mm -hmm. we can just change this one so you select this and you go to the visuals and you can see the slider settings over here mm -hmm. and uh, in some versions um you just check with your file I um, mean your power bi in some you have an mm. options directly from here you see that something over here mm -hmm. uh, there you will be getting the option to change it but in my one uh, it is showing that that slicer is changed into the format slicer setting option style that means it no more available over there but it's it depends on the version what you are selecting but anyway mm. it will be here slicer settings so when you click on the slicer setting Currently, the style is vertical list. I have to select here as a tile. See here? Mm. It's as a tile now. Complete, progress, correct? Mm. Or mm. you can choose as a drop down. That means mm. you click over here and you can just uh, select yeah. it from here. That is the drop down. So currently, I'll choose something like a button type. So I just mm. click here and I choose here vertical, uh, this one, tile. Mm -hmm. And here you can see single selection options. When you click on single selections, you know, one of the selections only you can do it. That means all together you cannot see it, either the complete or the in, in pro progress. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Or, so I keep over there multi-select with the selections and show select all. So when you click on this, you will be getting one more thing, which is called so select all. You see that? That is also coming here. So what is happening when I click on this complete, it comes and in progress it is coming. Then you click here, select all. Everything mm. will be coming. So it's better to mm. keep something like that. Clear, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So this is the same thing you mm. can use for the uh, other one. I mean, the team leader. We have so many other things over there. You can choose accordingly. Uh, let's okay. say one more. Um, this one I'm going to select it mm, the slicer one then I'm selecting over here group head then that also we have to change it from here slicer settings um, I select over here the tile and uh, see here now how bigger mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. according to this one then I click here ok so you can see how it is arranged okay mm. then uh, you can select this and you can make it smaller bigger accordingly let's say i need to select mm. this maybe i'll give the same size of this one
so when you drag over here you see some uh, what the red color line you are seeing right that is the yeah. alignment line it will help you to align with the other okay so let's say when I select this click over here you can see the slicer setting okay general settings the properties I give here 100 by uh, width is okay it's accordingly given so that is the same thing I'm going to give here I select this and I just go to the height how much we have given 100 so I'm, I'm just going to give the same thing and this width is according to the data which is inside right so here again we select this so you'll be seeing only mm. that particular group head and when you click on this Kimberly so it's it's purely depends on your data and you we need to mm. think that how we wanted to uh, mm. analyze our data C correct so click okay. here select all then when you select this okay this properties you can see the title you can turn on and off okay I, it's off already I click on header icons also I off here currently I don't want that then click here the type effect when you click on this effect you see over here the background you can choose the background color in case you require mm. okay. you select the background color um, so currently I'm not selecting that I'll keep currently I keep everything as background background color is white then we keep overall report background then later according to that we'll make the changes mm. then here the visual border in case you required you can add the visual border here and the shadows you want to add the shadow here you can turn on the shadow see here you're seeing the shadow around mm. and outside you need the shadow or inside you need the shadows that we have to give mm. from here. Mm. so currently i turned off that shadow also then what else um header icons are text okay then we'll go to the visual slicer setting uh, click on this values and you can see here the font color the values the font color the border border position the border color also we can change from here and the background color so currently there is no background color but you can select some background colors from here so this is the background color for the visual See? Mm -hmm. right, right. so once I click over here and I select more colors and I choose something like this colors okay mm. or any colors basically mm -hmm. you can select it okay I select that one then here I choose something like white color um, this is the color for the border okay so that I don't want I, that I'll keep it over here then the font color will change that into white colors or any other colors see yeah, yeah. okay so same like this this also you can format it accordingly mm. then what else we have placed over there um, i need to select this one so i'll just zoom out and i need to see that um, yeah this is the maximum I think so mm -hmm. I have to select this and I move then let's say suppose you want to place your project picture or some mm -hmm. something else like you know mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the graphics or the picture or some drawings or something you want to place it over here you can just go to the insert in mm -hmm. insert you can see over here the image options mm -hmm. then you select the image and you have to choose the image now currently we'll select one image from the google but mm -hmm. your images okay so anything mm -hmm. the jpg file png file any images you can select it mm -hmm. um, or your company logo you want to place it over there mm -hmm. So I'm just going to select this picture. So mm. anything. Right click, save images as. Mm. Pick to JPJ files, then come back here.
and when you select the picture and one more thing i need to say this is the symbol picture we have just simply down taken from the google mm. right mm -hmm. so we are not um, you know uh, aware about what is the size i just simply pick the picture from mm -hmm. there that's it and see here it is not properly aligned with my mm. uh, because here i have uh, let's say if i make like this see mm. and i can do it but whenever i'm stretching it it is not become bigger mm. right mm. because of the resolution of the picture but there are some mm. pictures uh, which called um, svg images mm. svg images in the sense the images which is scalable that means normally jpg mm. file when you scale uh, yeah mm. definitely it become bigger and smaller but um, that picture will be very blur type right it, okay it, yeah so instead of that you can select this svg images svg images uh, basically it's an image but it's a vector format not okay. a raster format so mm. that is the reason you can scale however you want um that it it scale but it's maintain the same quality also mm -hmm. so anyway just understand that this is the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, okay so that i have placed over here then next what we need to do let's say i'm going to create one more this one here and uh, i give the name team leader okay just we given something like that mm -hmm. then i select uh, this one and i'll be selecting here project by team leaders uh, this is just simply created over the, just to generate the sheet okay that's it now what i want to do now this is we created next we need to uh, navigate in between the sheets yeah so for this you can just go to the insert and you can see here buttons we have different button we will discuss about this later like mm. you can place the button when you click it post previous mm. next etc mm. you can create it but i'll be using over here the navigator now mm. okay. then when you select this navigator and you choose your page navigator so when mm. you click on the page navigator mm. you can see the page navigator is placed here normally it will be placed on the first position of your sheet i mean mm. here but you mm. can change that one in case you want okay the navigator is placed and once you place that navigator then again you can just click on the navigator and uh, uh, see here you can change the style of the navigator currently yeah, it's yeah. default style but you can change into hover press selected mm. and uh, the colors also font colors you can select it fill colors you can select it currently white color is filled but you could have changed that colors and border mm. colors you can change everything like mm. same like the other things what we have said mm. but how can we navigate it is it really navigating now let's say when i i'll just make it bigger for your visibility then mm. see here when i click on that da uh, dashboard it's in dashboard mm. only but when mm. i click on the team leader it's not going to the team leader now correct mm. that mm. because of i'm using here the desktop versions okay mm. and mm. you are using that online versions mm. directly you can when you click it will go in desktop versions you need to press the control and click mm. just press the control and click because this is mm. considering something like uh, uh link in excel right when so mm -hmm. excel link also in desktop versions how we do directly you click it won't come you need yeah. to click on the control and you need to click over there mm -hmm. so then again we can place it here also that navigator button the same places so you can mm -hmm. just go back right mm -hmm. uh let's say the navigator button i place over here insert buttons and you can select the navigator and the page navigation buttons so mm -hmm. again currently this is the active one so it is showing in that particular colors then i mm. click on control and click mm. on the dashboard so mm. you can see that it is going back to this one so understood right that yeah yeah, yeah. Of yeah. 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 yeah 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 the next one we have to do the customize i mean uh, customizing your 
background for the report mm. purpose mm. so that we will discuss in the next class okay 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 okay, okay. uh this is uh, related to the primavera you uh, when you are doing it actually you need to be anything loaded in that kind of program you will be looking for it or you will be having that how normally no i didn't get you like uh, when you are uh, using the primavera data mm. for the dashboard purpose so at the time you will have that uh, content with you or you will be uh, expecting for me anything uh, uh, i have some content Okay. okay. We'll start with that. Then later you can provide no, the content also. No, 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 no. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>